Hi guys, in today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at how to achieve an animated skeleton loading UI in Figma. Before we move further, what is skeleton loading? I want you to first remove or delete that first picture that comes to your mind, which is this. And come back to the UI world and think of something like this. Skeleton loading is a type of visual interactions that is used when the main content of the design is not fully displayed. It is used to provide the users, which is you and me, as a visual indication that the main content is being loaded or fetched. In the recent trend of UI or UX design, this skeleton loading effect has been used by so many apps, apps like your Figma, your YouTube, Facebook. X, which is known as a Twitter, and so on. Having known the meaning of a skeleton loading, we are going to dive in into the main practical of this video. This is the design we are going to be using in this tutorial. The one by my left hand side is where we are going to be placing all the components we are going to be using in this particular tutorial. How are we going to create this kind of interaction? Firstly, is by creating a placeholder. This placeholder is not going to replace the actual design component of this particular design. To create this placeholder, we are going to draw a frame. I'll be using a width of 300 and a height of 30. This is not like a Madichi size you must use when designing. Just make sure that your height doesn't exceed 30. I'll be changing the color of this our frame to the background color of our design. So I'll be picking the background color which is this and making it a little bit brighter. I'll raise it up like this. So something like this is okay. The next thing here is to create a rectangle. So I will draw out a rectangle of any size to something like this. I will be changing the color of this rectangle to the color of our initial frame which is this one here. I will be making it a little bit more brighter. I will raise it up to something like this. This solid color, I will be changing it into a gradient. So you head up to your gradient panel here and create a gradient. I will be taking this gradient horizontally so I will take this one here and the other one here. What comes next is that I will be putting another gradient at the middle. So this is it here. The middle gradient is going to be a little bit brighter, much more brighter than the other ones. So we are going to go with something like this. The two end of this particular gradient, I'm going to be changing the opacity down to zero. So I'll change this one down to zero and the other one to, to zero. So we are left with only the center gradient. This gradient, I'm going to be placing it inside this frame we initially created. So I'm going to be putting it inside the frame. So it should be having something like this. I'll be shifting this frame or I'll be shifting this rectangle out of sight. So it's inside the frame but it's just that you cannot see. I'll be aligning it to the same horizontal part of our frame which is this and shift it a little bit to something like this. The next thing here we are going to ensure is that our constraints it's set to the left and also to the top. This is because when we set this interaction, I don't want it to shift from its positions I've already set it. I will then be making this frame a master component. To create a component, I'll be clicking this and also I'll be adding a variant. In this intrinsic or second variant, I'll be locating the rectangle, which is this, and shift it to the opposite side, to something like this. The next thing here is to ensure that your constraints is set to the right hand side because we just shifted the rectangle from the left hand side to the right hand side. I'll be changing the constraints to the right hand side and also to the top. Having done this, I'll prototype this variant we just created to create that interaction that we are going to be using in this tutorial. We'll be adding our first interaction to the second variant. The interaction here is going to be after delay. So I'm going to select after delay. Then I will take this to 300 milliseconds. For this, it's going to be Smart Animate. For the second interaction, I'm going to take this and connect it to the first one. It's going to be After Delay. So I'm going to select After Delay. But the difference here is that this one is going to be 1 millisecond. Boom. This time it's not going to be smart animate but instant because I, I want it to return back at an instant. After we are done prototyping, the next thing is to go to your asset and select out our prototype. With this frame, I'm going to be replacing it with our main design. This 
this is the outcome of what we just did in this tutorial so as you are seeing it's kind of refreshing and it's giving this vibe that an update is trying to pop up or something is being followed after this which is the main design we have come to the end of this tutorial if you like this video and you love what you see i want you to give a remark in the comment section and if you are my channel for the first time i want you to click the subscribe button so this video can be recommended to others who may need it see you guys in my next lesson bye